Hey YouTube, Meep Making here. Welcome to episode 28 of our Feet the Beast Continuum Quick Tips and Tricks. Um, this episode we're going to talk about um, some kind of difficult and really, really, really expensive machines. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, the goal of this episode was to make it to um, the reactor. Now big reactors here it's called extreme reactors um the power generation there is usually pretty ridiculous you can get really stupid with these things especially when you get turbines in the mix uh but i did manage to get a very simple um very basic one up and running uh, so let's take a look at, at what we got here so the initial stuff we're looking for um, it's just going to be reactor casing, reactor controller, an access port, a control rod, a fuel rod, and then an RF power tab. Now, usually when I go ahead and do these, I get the, um, let's see here, I think it's called a extreme reactors, and it's going to be this redstone port. Uh, there's a few different options you can set this redstone port to, um, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But let's take a look at what it costs to build these things because reactor casing is incredibly fucking expensive. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about graphite bars being done in this resonator. Um, here's where all this stuff is going to come into play. So reactor casing is stupid expensive, um, most because of the graphite and this dirty damn thing hot tung steel, tungsten steel, excuse me, ingot. Um, it doesn't look all that expensive, right? So it's just tungsten um, and then steel inside the industrial blast furnace. Well, guess what? In order to get this to 3000 heat, we're stuck making advanced machine casings. So let's take a look at that real quick. Uh, where in the hell are they? Here they are. So here's where things get a little bit silly. Um, you'll notice here that there's a bunch of chrome, but there's also a shitload of data storage circuits, which is emerald plates. Now, I didn't do the math on this. I should have. Um, I can tell you that I did have to make an, a total of eight of these advanced machine casings. I don't remember what the cost was. Fortunately, we can reuse the reinforced machine casings that you're going to pull off the machine, but this chrome is expensive and so is this shit. Um, so keep that in mind. Plan ahead. It looks like um, it looks like uh, 16 regular circuits are going to be needed um, in order to get uh, just one of these. Um, crafted I guess so keep that in mind you're gonna want a shitload of latex keep working on that copper if you're using gold to make uh, your advanced um, electronic circuits um, just keep that in mind um, you're gonna need some iridium too so be aware that that's you're gonna have to have that shit too so but anyway um, if we didn't go over this before chrome really isn't all that difficult to come up with um, this is going to come from the industrial blast furnace as well, except it's going to come from ruby dust. Now, I kind of went a different route with this ruby dust because I stuffed this stuff into actually I put this into the industrial grinder. That's where that ended up. Let's take a look at that real quick. And let's see here. Oh, that's the industrial centrifuge. Anyway, I put this in here. Um, so ruby ore, you end up with a certain amount of this. Small pile of ruby dust. Um, so you end up with a full ruby, some ruby dust, um, and then some garnet. Um, could you get more out of this with luck on it? Yeah, yeah, I think you can. Um, I put it in the machine, I ran it out. I had more than enough this time through. Um, it's kind of a pain in the ass to deal with 
regardless, but just keep in mind that that's there. Um, this stuff all gets run through um, the machine over there. Um, it comes out as chrome dust. I don't know if I necessarily have any stored in these chests. Nope, doesn't look like it. Nope. Nope. Ruby dust is there. That stuff's all gone. That was all processed. So keep in mind you're going to need some of that. Um, and then emeralds. So if you're not farming by now, it's up to you however you want to do it. If you want to use a plant sower, I have upgraded um, my watering can, I guess. Cool thing about this is it hits up 7x7. Seven seven. Um, and it works relatively well. So you can usually, well, I can come up with about 8 stacks in about 3-4 eh, minutes. Well, what the hell's going on here? Uh, but that's there, so keep that in mind. You're going to need a shit ton of emeralds. Okay. Um, what else did we need to talk about here? Let's go back to Extreme Reactors. Ah, uranium. So if you haven't been picking this stuff up, definitely do that. So this is your fuel, but it's also the crafting material for a lot of this stuff. Um, you're going to need a lot of it. Um, it's just one of those deals. Gotta have the shit. Gotta have it, gotta have it. Okay? Um, that can, all this stuff, um, the ore itself can be thrown into the crusher. You can pound those out as dust and then re-smelt them to uranium ingots. So go ahead and do that that way or whichever way you choose. So... Let's talk about these graphite bars a little bit. So we talked about this being done with this HOP or hop or whatever the hell it is, graphite ingot, um, going into the resonator uh, for 32 GP and it turns into a graphite bar. So let's take a look at how I've got that set up. Um, if you remember, we've got our survival, yep, survival generator. This ends up being part of your grid power network. And I'm not sure what the distance is, if it's if it's a certain area or what, but this thing has been powering up there. So let's go upstairs and take a look. Um, we'll kind of check out what what's going on here. Um, and you'll notice this giant cluster fuck. Um, so in order to get those graphite um, deals to come out of here, um, you throw them in here and it it powers. So the way this works is. You can see I'm getting some efficiency loss here because this I've got so many solar panels sitting here. I think this is a stack and a half. But anyway, this will it'll do pretty much whatever I want with it. Um, you can go ahead and set this up wherever you want. I don't think I, I think only one of these really makes a difference here. I don't think this is I don't think these other two on the sides are relevant. I haven't played with it a lot. I really wanted to get that reactor set up. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. These solar panels are relatively cheap. I think um, if you're actually down mining, which you probably should be, you have to be, you'll find enough of these resonating redstone crystals to make this happen. These are relatively cheap. I made a stack and then some, I'm, like I said, I think it was like a half. But um, it works relatively well. The only thing that sucks is that it only works during the day. Um, but sleeping kind of bypassed all that. I've got probably seven or eight hours on um, between the last episode in order to make this work. I've burned up uh, about 1,300 buckets of biodiesel. Um, so that was uh, <laughs> I burned up a lot of shit. Um, used a ton of resources on this. Um, RF was kind of an issue, but now since the reactor's here, we can kind of supplement that a little bit. So, um, let's take a look at the rest of these components. So, the first thing you're going to have to have is you've got to have this reactor controller. Relatively simple to make. Diamond, redstone, no big deal. Um, once you've got that set up, I usually make this re uh, reactor redstone port pretty simple. You can sh turn it on and off. You can do waste ejection and shit like that. Uh, reactor RF power tap. So this is where you're going to hook in your flux duct or your HV cable or whatever you're using to uh, transfer power. Um, you're going to need a reactor access port. So this is where you're putting uranium in and you're pulling plutonium out. I think that's or it's cy cyanide. Sorry, plutonium is uh, that other shit that 
eventually we'll all have to get to. Um, and then the other thing that we need to look at, because we don't need a fluid port yet, um, the control rod. Um, so just a, a few graphite bars, the uranium, and then the actual fuel rod itself. So these are relatively simple. Um, but that should get you by through better questing. So pick all this shit up and you should be in good shape. The bonus here is 16 cyanide ingots. Um, and you're going to need that for some other items further down the line here. Um, but this is the basic unit. Um, once you've got some, some fuel here... Um, I've got a bunch up there, but let's go take a look because there are some, some setup issues and I think, let's go do a little bit of testing here. I'm going to, I think I have enough to make this work. Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. Shit. Out of gold. How the hell did that happen? Probably because I haven't been mining worth a shit. I do have some here. I just didn't finish it because I was so RF deprived. Let me grab one of these quick. Pull that uranium out of there. I'll take that. We'll make one more quick here. There we go. And let's see if I can make three of these. And I'm going to leave this. That should be enough. And one more of these. Okay. All right, now we can go up. So if you noticed uh, in the better questing, the little dialogue on the left, you'll notice that these reactors are specific to an 11 by 11 by 11 cube. So they can get pretty goddamn huge. Um, and I, I've built them that big, and yes, they are massive, um, especially once you're using steam to pump turbines. Um, the, the RF generation is a little bit ridiculous. So... Let's take a look at this. Um, so your basic 3x3x3 three by three by three here. Um, we can tear this down. You can kind of see what's going on here. So um, your base layer is just going to be uh, reactor casing. Um, so 3x3. Three three. Um, next layer up, you're going to want your controller somewhere. Um, it's going to have to be in the middle because your outside edges here have to be reactor casing. It can't be any of the ports or the controller just because the outside is part of the frame and it'll tell you that um, we could test that let's look at the inside of here quick um, so in the middle you gotta have a fuel rod and then on top of that is going to be the control rod and you can see the graphic on the outside changed that's how you know it actually went you'll get this UI too once you click it so let's tear this apart and let's swap one of these. And if you right click here with an open hand, only case we may use as part of the reactor's frame. So just make sure that you're you're putting your ports and controllers and stuff in the right spot. When the graphic changes, you're all set. Okay. So what I've got going on here is. We've got your reactor controller. Um, this gives you a little bit of information about what's going on, but let's go over the ports quick. Um, as you can see here, this um, RF power tap, really the only thing that's going on here is this is just you know going over the power cell. That's what it does. Um, you've got your reactor access port here. Um, so the yellow green um, is input and blue is out. You can kind of see that here. Um, you can eject the fuel, so anything that's in there we can pull back out. Or we can eject the waste, so that should show up in here. Um, you can set this as two different ways. Right now it's set to inlet mode, so if you had an inventory on here like a hopper, you could set this up so that it was an inlet. Or if you had it set for output, you could output to a chest. Um, right now I've got it set for inlet. I'm not doing anything with it. Okay. Let's take a look at this reactor redstone port because you've got a few different options here. 
The one that really is important to me right now is this toggle on or off, so we can do it with the redstones, uh, like a switch, rather than going into the controller every time. Eventually, I'm going to set it up the same as over there with a, probably a red net wired down to the floor, um, so we can do it that way. But you do have a few options here. Um, on the signal, you can change it to control the rod insertion. So if you wanted to set it to, say, 50%, you can drop that down this way. Um, you've got eject waste. Um, you can output fuel temps, case temps. Um, there's a mix of fuel percentage here. Um, and, and this stuff, I don't know if the machinery is here to do that. It very well may. Um, I'm not quite sure, but we'll have to play with that just to see. Um, like I said, I'm most concerned about toggling the reactor on and off. So you can hit reset here to reset whatever you had set before, or if you switch these up, you'll notice that your commit comes up. Um, but you, had, you do have some different options here. I won't go through all of these, you can kind of play with it a little bit, but just know that the two most important ones in my mind, possibly three, just waste ejection, is going to be your control rod insertion and uh, the reactor on off. So let's get this bitch hooked back up. Let's take a look at it here. I've already got this set. So let's look at the UI. This is on. Now, all I've got in there is four ingots of uranium. And it's generating 251 RF per tick. You can see the temperature here is doing what it's doing. Um, and as this thing goes, it's, it's going to slowly drop off. Um, you can see this; it doesn't get really hot, but it is generating 0.11 millibuckets per tick. So these do burn up um, relatively fast. Um, I think that being able to um, find enough uranium, I don't think you're really going to see a huge, huge problem here. Um, it does have an internal buffer of, it looks like, 10 million. Um, so if you're filling that up, great. Um, one thing we should talk about real quick here, uh, we've still got a little bit of time, is the reactor control rod. So you can name these and set them. Um, I don't see any of the computer craft stuff or any of those in here to actually manipulate those. Um, so we won't worry about naming it. Um, but if we change this insertion in here, let's change it to 50%. We could see that this is dropped. So it's definitely not burning up. It went down by half or so, maybe a little less. Um, so you can kind of control what you've got going here. If you want to just a steady output, you can set that up this way and it should run just fine. Okay. Um, I'm going to see if I can get this thing cranked up a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. Uh, but I, what I'd like to do here is pull this stuff off. And we'll put another fuel rod in. This gets to be kind of a pain in the ass with these ports here. And there we go. So this multi-blocked again. Now let's see what we've got for capacity here. This is shutting off. So total capacity is 8 millibuckets. So it should fit 8 ingots in there. Let's take a look and see. It looks like it did load those. Oh, there might have been a little waste. Let's, let's pull these out. Delorium. Let's eject that too. Let's put these back in. We'll have to burn these up. So eulorium is actually what happens. It, it looks like it's it's slightly, you know, used once it goes from uranium goes in here. I don't remember that being a thing, but I guess it is. Um, but let's see what this bitch does now that it's got uh, two fuel rods in there with it's technically seven. But this is pumping out 530 RF per tick. So as I collect more tungsten and, and get more steel and stuff together, um, we'll kind of do some more processing stuff on that and actually increase this. Um, it seems like the hotter you run these things, the better. Um, you can kind of kind of see it here. Um, high heat raises energy output and coolant conversion. 
Um, and there are there's some different ways we can go about doing this. Um, you are limited to the the 11 by 11 by 11, so kind of keep that in mind. But before you get to that point, I think you probably want to be mo moving on to some sort of a turbine, um, and and usually that works out pretty damn well. So, um, so as you can see here, this is kind of it, it's it's burning shit up pretty good. But in order to you know supplement the diesel generator. Um, like this is pumping this stuff right in here and it's doing its business. So 4.1 million RF. Um, I'm wondering if, well, it's got a 10 million, uh, a buffer here of 10 million. So it should sit. It's not like the old style, um, but it should shut itself down if this is full. Um, we'll have to have to test that for sure, but I'm, I'm almost positive this thing will throttle itself down if it does hit that buffer. So it's not continually pissing away eulorium and uranium so um kind of hit that 20 minute mark but i just wanted to kind of go over this reactor stuff um definitely play with it um we'll go over this some more in, a, in another episode but i just wanted to get this up there so that you know you can start using this to generate um, rf to supplement your biodiesel if that's what you've been using so until next time